Time ticking down. 0 0 the score. The Penguins and the Predators fighting here in Nashville in game six. Penguins have scored on the rebound from behind the net. Patrick Hawk was splitted in on Green A and it's all over. The Pittsburgh Penguins have won the Stanley Cup. This is absolutely a, a great thrill. It really is, no matter if it happens once, twice, three, four, five times. was another summer spent with Stanley in Pittsburgh. Before going their separate ways, the Penguins introduced their newest teammate to some friends around town. Let's go, boys! Here we go, boys! Here we go! It's fun. This is an unbelievable stadium, and to be able to bring the Stanley Cup here and do all this is a great experience, so pretty cool to be able to throw at the first pitch and, you know, share it with all the guys. strike though. Pittsburgh's just a great sports town. I think we all understand that and I think we all pull for the other teams who are part of the city and it's really cool to see some of the guys and see the reaction to see the Stanley Cup. It doesn't get old. Hey, if we clear benches right now, would you guys like Oh yeah. Sick. <laughs> I would go after the little sky. No, I didn't even recognize him at first. He said the know, beer. Nobody knows, my teammates didn't know me. <laughs> the fact that they did it back to back with so many different injuries, key guys had to step up. You just want to commend them for what they did, but then you also want to replicate it because the city is deserving of both championships. The iconic trophy is passed from player to player, a symbolic ritual acknowledging each person who had a hand in achieving it. And so, when each player gets his day with the Stanley Cup, well, he passes it along to those who helped him. Went to BC for three years. This is what helped develop me as a person, as a player, to eventually win the Stanley Cup. So I wanted to bring it back here. I still come here and work out and skate, so it's still a big part of my life. And I still got one more class left to graduate, so hopefully I'll be done with that pretty soon. Last year, I promised if I wanted again to coach York, I'd bring it back to BC. And of course, he held me on that promise, so it's special to be able to bring it back. What's up, buddy? How you guys doing? Lauren, nice to meet you guys. He won two high school championships, came to Boston College, won two national championships, and now NHL has won two Stanley Cups, so he has a certain aura that he brings to teams, which you can't deny it. High five. Yeah. Oh, nice. Went to the Stanley Cup when I was 18 months old. I grew up a Penguins fan, and so to watch your best friend win two Stanley Cups with the team you grew up watching is really surreal. And so it's uh, pretty awesome to be a part of this day and just be around for everything. I'm proud of this guy. I'm proud of all of them. All right, Grampy. Love you. Love yeah, love you too. We're just so proud of him as a person and a player. He's a great kid. I just still can't believe that he's just a regular kid that made his way here, and dreams really do come true. Having the cup 
for a day in the summer is an extremely exciting time. You wait for it, you know, you know it's a week left and then you start counting down the days and then the day you get the cup, it's just joy. This year was awesome, a little more laid back. We went on the lake, that was pretty fun on the houseboat and that was a lot of fun. Then we had a party with Chad Brown, a country artist from Kelowna, actually was drafted to the Canucks. He came out and put on a little show and it was awesome and it just sounded real day. It's an unbelievable experience to have the opportunity to spend a day with the Stanley Cup. When you've been in the game as long as I have, you don't take it for granted. I've spent a lot of time at this rink coaching kids over the years and coaching my own kids. And so this rink in particular means a lot to my family and my kids. And we thought it would be nice to bring it back and share it with the next generation. Hi guys, how are you? Nice to, nice to see you, what's up? We grew up playing hockey at the bog there in Kingston for the Breakers program and to see the kids that were in my shoes growing up in that rink and playing hockey for that same program, it's awesome to see their faces and just to see them light up when the cup comes in the building, it's definitely a cool experience. We'll be the last two teams on this rink. This ring will move up, they'll all move up and then this one will go into the Hall of Fame. A lot of people who are even at this party don't see how long it's been and how long time coming it is and like how many times we've moved and how many times he didn't know what the future was going to be like and he has even said like if I never won a Stanley Cup in Pittsburgh I don't know where we would be right now. For it to finally come together after all these years I feel like it's something that I could never have even pictured so it's unbelievable. I feel like I've never had a job in my life. I'm 49 years old and I still feel like I'm playing a game that I love to play and love to be involved in. So. I don't know that I can put into words what the game has meant to me. The end of summer can spark many emotions, but it almost always signifies a return to normalcy. For the back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions, it marks the beginning of a new story, one they hope has a familiar ending that first day when everybody reconvenes for training camp and we get ready to start the journey all over again. I think it's exciting for all of us. You get giddy and excited to get to the rink that first day and see everyone again, and even though it really wasn't that long since we saw each other, everyone's happy to get back and get back at it and try to get another one. You miss everybody. You miss the guys, you miss the camaraderie. Everybody comes in, they're happy. For the most part, they're healthy, and everybody can start fresh again. Fresh is just one of the many adjectives used to describe new Penguins forward, Ryan Reeves. Here's good. <laughs> I had to find a barbershop yesterday. Start flexing or not flexing? The city's a lot nicer than I was picturing. Everybody's been real nice, all the boys have been real welcoming, so ready to get training camp going and the season going for sure. This brings back a lot of memories. You want me to smash this after? Sure. Really? Obviously, it's kind of a hectic time when, when you get traded during the summer and you're uh, trying to readjust. So, Tanger, Sid, Gino, they all sent me a text. You know, just kind of welcoming the team. I've got to know them a little bit better since I've been here. Phil, are you ready for some basketball? I don't care. Play one -on -one. I'll play you one-on-one. -on -one. I can ball. You can't ball. You don't believe that? I don't believe it for a second. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's go. The streets, boy, I'm from the streets. I'm from the streets of Winnipeg. Ha! <laughs> on. Uh, guys, I can't get nothing in. I'm gonna have a tough time winning here. No, oh, he's short. Game, blouses. The chemistry of a championship team can precipitate in many places, but the strongest bonds are formed on the ice. We're trying to create a training camp that encourages a competitive spirit that's part of the design of the camp, and one of the things we love about our guys is how competitive they are. Good job, good job. Keep pushing, keep pushing. We're trying to create as many competitive scenarios as we can to try to push ourselves to be at our best. 
we're looking for that competitive spirit there in all of our players. All right, so we're going three laps. We're trying to go 45 seconds. Peggy just flies, you know. Poor guy's with him. He's like the rabbit. Good job, good job. Make sure we're moving. Keep pushing. Good, that's how to skate, gang. It's gonna be two 20 minute running time periods. We want you to get enough reps with this thing so that it's productive. So let's play the win out there, all right? Hey, go warm up your goalie. Go warm your goalie up. How old are you again? I'm young. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Jake, he just finds the ice, doesn't he? Yeah. This is a good line. Huh? Sid's line is a good line. Hey! Need one, Phil. Oh, nice play. Two goals for Jake. Hey, kid. Great win, boys. Pittsburgh Penguins hockey is back. It's preseason for the two-time defending champs. Here we go. Tonight it all starts again. Here we go, man. The way we look at the exhibition games is twofold. We are trying to get an opportunity to see some of the players, the young players that we may not be as familiar with. So we're trying to get an evaluation of those young players and how they might fit on our team and whether or not you know they can help us win immediately or if we think they're knocking on the door or they're a little bit further out, we're trying to get an idea of the people that we have in our organization. So that's part of the exhibition season. The other part is trying to prepare our team for game one. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to implement certain strategies and tactics as far as how we're trying to play the game. It's hard to simulate game situations in a practice environment. The intensity, the belligerence, the push and the shove and the body contact, the physical aspect of the game. It's always that balance of evaluation and preparation that we're trying to walk when we go through the exhibition season. Prior to ringing in the new hockey year, the Penguins added another to their collection. able to sit back and reflect a little bit and think about what it is everyone's accomplished. Back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions in the salary cap era. Unbelievable. It's certainly something that you don't think you're ever going to do once, let alone twice, so the celebration is just kind of the culmination of that and it's something that we obviously really cherish, so that's pretty special. It's truly a privilege to be your coach. I've never been around a greater group of players in all the years that I've been associated with this game. You guys have accomplished so much over the last two years that we're so appreciative of your commitment, your willingness to go the extra mile, and we're going to ask for that commitment again this year. We've got a great group here. We get a chance to make history again. My hope is that this night will just inspire everyone to want to do it again. To go back to back and see these two rings is really special. We never stop long enough to think about what just happened and how it all happened because our business is going all year round. So at some point in time in our life, we'll really be able to sit and reflect on this. But to be in a room with a group of players and coaches and how great the owners treat us and just how well the players get along, it's just such a special feeling. Stanley Cup run, the commitment level, the intensity and the sacrifice that our players went through for two and a half months in order to accomplish that goal and allow that banner to be lifted to the rafters. It's definitely not, you know, something that happens very often and, you know, for it to happen two years in a row, it's pretty cool. To look up in the rafters and see the players' jerseys have been retired and the 
the banners that are already up there and to see another one go up, it's hard to put in words, it's just very special. Okay, gang. I think we got to enjoy the pregame ceremonies. You guys have earned it. You deserve it. I think we should enjoy it, but we, we have to be ready to get locked in once that's over. All right, let's have a good game here. It was the culmination of what any hockey player hopes to achieve. A year's worth of work immortalized, suspended in history forever. The thread between generations is woven by championship teams. It's a reflection of where they've been and a constant reminder of the elevation they again hope to reach. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. Water, boys. I'm rerouting. I'm coming across. Handles the puck in the blues in. Out over to Justin Schultz. He shoots and scores. Justin Schultz let it go. And he gets by Allen. The Penguins have a one nothing lead. Oh, fuck up, Dano. That's what we got to do. Go towards them. Go towards them. Pace is frantic here by both teams. In front score, and it's 10. A strong shift there by the St. Louis Blues. Hey, keep playing here. Forget about it. Hey. Come on here. Come on, we need some juice here. We're flatlined. All it takes is one shot. We're right back in the hockey game. 6.19 to go. It's in the tank, center point, right side. Malkin, slapper, save me, rebound, score. Crosby, Hart Fake is the man that got it. He rips in the rebound, and the Penguins make it four to three. Oh, slap me, silly Sydney. Rust handed it over. McKegg across, scores! Out of battle, gang. That's out of battle. Lead pass to Petrangelo. Penguins on drag it, shoot it, score it. Petrangelo wins it for the Blues. He beats Matt Murray, and the Blues have won in overtime. At a minute and 15 seconds, it's Alex Petrangelo. As the defending back-to-back -back champions embarked on their first road trip, it was also the first of a league-high 19 back-to-back -back games the team would play this season. Whether you win or lose, you got to be honest with your game, and it hasn't been good enough. So it's a tough lesson, but you know, we've got to take something from it, and uh, hopefully this is something that's a wake-up call for us. The Penguins return home looking for their first win of the regular season. It's time to congratulate you. Appreciate it. Thanks for everything you did. Thank you. You're a big part of this. Really appreciate it. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. And good luck. Thanks. Okay. I'm sure it'll be emotional at the beginning, but he's one of those guys. You know he's a dangerous player. You know he's going to try to get on the board, and you know he's going to try to get under somebody's skin. It was weird seeing him on the other side, but you know, good for him. He's doing well. Falcon, once I drive, he scores! The game itself felt like it was right back where we left off in June. It was intense, and it was really games you, you love to be a part of. There are animosities that build up when you play against a certain team in a series, but when these two teams match up, it seems like it's an emotional, intense battle. It was a high-tempo game. It was a playoff-style game. We had to play the game in different ways. It got physical at one point. We made the adjustments to cover off that physical area. Now we're able to play the game any style a team wants to play. Oli Mata has given the Penguins a 4 nothing lead! That was the first game, when, you know, in our three games that we saw our team play at the level they're capable of. A rematch of the Stanley Cup Final was followed by a trip to Washington, D.C. Before facing the Capitals, the team stopped at the White House. And with that, the curtain was officially closed on the championship celebrations. For the Penguins, some good vibes coming into tonight. Patrick Hornquist is back. Crosby, that one that's fired for it, but rebound out of an up and a scramble, they score! It is Hornquist at his office. 
It's important to get the points early on. You've seen some teams that have come off a Stanley Cup win and they start to struggle early. We know that we have to play the right way day in and day out. And you know, if we play similar to what we did there, have a good chance of getting some points early on, even though we're playing some really good teams and those matchups are fun. It's easier to get up for them and you know we're gonna be ready to go. We need some wins here. Time will run out on the Capitals. That's two in a row for the Pens. Guy Pen playing on nine fingers, the Horn guy. Oh. As it's set up now, we have been dealt a very difficult first month to turn around this week and play in Washington and take a long flight to Tampa and play the next night. These are real tests for our team. Penguins have a way of thriving under adverse conditions, and that's no exception for this group. Regardless of circumstance, they play the right way. A message that's sent from the Emperor Penguin come down. Gensel picks it up. Penguins go the other way. It's Gensel and Crosby two on two. Gensel in front to Crosby could not connect. I don't know if I just like muffed it because it was a sauce, but a great look though, man. Now Cuckoo with a blast. That one goes in. Change direction on the way to the net. Chris Letang spins it right on goal. The flexion score! Jake Gensel parked in front. Beautiful tip. Hey, nice tip. You still kick a mode if I win it? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. Kunitz, try to pass across, it's picked off at an opportunity. Jake Gensel, one. Oh boy, he's in! Stop it! Oh. By Vasilevsky! Our focus has to be just on the day-to-day -day process. And that's what we're preaching to our players, is make sure we come to the rink every day and take ownership for your own respective game to try to help us get better. So we got some tough games coming up. We had a tough schedule to start, so it's important to get playing the right way and try to get some points here because you don't want to get too far behind. Ultimately, the team's got to come together, put together streaks. But Early on here, we have to see how these guys respond to the adversity that we're dealt with right off the start.